Floor, please. Oh, what a shot. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Four Please Now Driving, the official Masters podcast. I'm your host, Marty Smith from ESPN, and this is the best week of the year. The Masters is truly a masterpiece. It is art in movement and in motif. Brush strokes dipped in tradition, painted by the hands of golf's most celebrated craftsmen on the sport's most revered canvas. The azaleas at Amen Corner burst an iconic Augusta National welcome to Masters patrons, and Magnolia Lane provides a tunnel to a dream for Masters participants. History is palpable here. You feel it when you walk through the gates. You're overwhelmed by it when the realization hits you that yes, that is the exact spot where Tiger Woods hit the chip in 2005. And yes, that is the exact spot where Jack's putt clinched the 50th Masters Tournament in 1986. Maybe. Yes, sir! And you sip your crow's nest beer and you look around at the greenest fairways you've ever seen. A green that doesn't exist on any other palette anywhere. And the blinding white sand in the bunkers. And you look skyward as manual numbers are hand placed in the scoreboard. You reach for your phone, and it's not there. And that is wonderful. Your ears tune to the birds chirping their song in the Georgia pines, and you notice the smiles on the faces of everyone around you. Reverence hangs in the air. Yet simultaneously, the Masters inspires a beautiful awareness of rebirth and hope. Vibrance. The Masters transcends golf. It transcends sport. Appreciation for what was and anticipation for what will be. Timeless. A history of dreams and of dreamers. This is Four Please Now Driving. Welcome to the 88th Masters. Yes, my friends, it is time for the 88th Masters Tournament. And though it is just Monday, the anticipation I talked about earlier is very real. I saw an ESPN colleague this morning, and it was her first ever trip to Augusta National. She had that same first-time facial expression nearly all of us have who were fortunate enough to come here. It's a combination of awestruck and gobsmacked and humbled. It always exceeds expectation. Before we take a look at the week ahead, let's look back at the 2023 Masters, from which Spaniard John Rahm emerged as champion. Rom wins the Masters Marathon. About his historic Masters victory, John Rom told me earlier this month, there's definitely a before and after because your name is elevated so much by the accomplishment, there's never been a victory that carried that kind of notoriety. For a lot of people, it's the best tournament there is. It just doesn't get any better than the Masters. I agree, John. One notable reason that Rom earned a green jacket is his longtime caddy, Adam Hayes. I made my way over to the Golf Services Building here at Augusta National Monday to learn more about their history together, their relationship, and quite literally living the dream. Adam Hayes is a great man. He is a great friend to me. He is a Masters champion and an emu farmer. (laughs) <laughs> alpaca I'll, I'll, whatever same thing I'm sure you can tell me the difference I'm sure you can tell me the difference between yeah. the two but uh, it is so nice to spend time with you appreciate your time as me, yeah. we embark on you and John Rom working on defending your Masters Championship so I just will start with the dream how did reality intersect with whatever your dream was for that accomplishment well um, gosh a lot um came here as a young kid. My parents were crazy enough to let me jump in a car with a couple of college guys that were 18, 19 years old and um, cruised up here. I need to figure out what year it was. I think it was, 
I don't know, but we'll, we can do that some other time. I was probably in the seventh grade. And um, here's just, you know, seventh grader riding up here with, you know, from Central Florida with a couple college age kids and, you know, left at four in the morning, three, four in the morning, got here, walked around, it was incredible. Um, and then fast forward to caddying, um, we're for several guys who, who played here and who had chances here. Um, we were paired with Zach Johnson when he won uh, in, the, in the final round. I was running for Vaughn Taylor. And, um, so, so I saw what it was like to win, and it was always a dream to, to do it because it's such a special place. So fast forward to now, um, coming in here. You, know, you got a, a one on your chest, man. one on, it's, uh, it's emotional, you know? I mean, you're, you're, you're getting emotional right yeah. now. Yeah, it's a special place. I mean, listen, we, we get to come here once a year. Um, you know, the course is, it's never the same. Um, the conditions are never the same. And it's, it presents so many challenges. On top of, you know, some people argue it's, I think it's the, the best major. It's the hardest one to win. Some people argue that. But um, I think the pressure that goes along with winning a, uh, a green jacket, just, it makes it difficult. And for John to overcome the things he overcame last year with being on the uh, wrong side of the draw with the weather, um, and I know everybody had to play in it, but some guys had the worst of it. Uh, four putt in the first hole, uh, all those things. Um, to walk up that green with a four shot lead was awesome. What was your conversation during that walk? Well, obviously everybody talks about the bad tee shot. It wasn't that bad. It, uh, <laughs> it did hit the trees. Says I, the caddy. I, I actually saw it, which is crazy, because usually he always sees it, and I'm always like, where is that? Um, and uh, so I knew it was okay. He wanted to hit another one. He said he didn't want to leave with that thought in his mind. So he got up there and hammered another one. Beautiful drive. Um, we got down there. He was wanting to, talking about hitting it up in the crowd and hitting it around. I'm like, let's just hit a four iron up there and get the <laughs> hell out of here, you know? Um, don't need all these people. We got these nice seats. We don't need to make a move. So anyways, he hit it up there. Uh, and then when we got up there, I said, hey, man, let's go get this thing up and down, you know, like a real champion. He did it, so it was awesome. I'm just so impressed with the emotion right now. And when, when we are blessed with the opportunity to come back to the same place every, every single year, and yeah. there's so much reverence and so much history and so much tradition, and it's the ultimate accomplishment in the sport, sure. you it can't is. help but feel differently. But not everybody's moved like you are right now. Yeah, it was, you know, people talk about the, um, you know, the things that went on being, you know, John obviously being from Spain, um, the Spanish history at Augusta, um, you know, April 9th, I was wearing number 49, Seve's birthday, all these kind of stars aligned. So, you know, when you think about that, sometimes you, I don't know, just like it was meant to be. It, I mean, it, it's wonderful. And I know that you guys have the opportunity to keep your caddy suit. Yeah. Yep. Where is yours? It's hanging in my closet. <laughs> I. Uh, it's pretty cool. They make you kind of um, request it or, or you know um, write a letter. Um, what did you then, write? You know, I don't think I did. I uh, I just asked them, and these guys are great. And um, they sent. You know, it came in a um, came in a night really cool box and nice letter from these guys and uh, from the chairman. Um, nice letter, and then a really cool kind of collage picture with some of the special moments of the week on it of John and I. So, pretty cool. Every single yeah. thing you say, you get yeah. teary. It's uh, yeah. I hadn't really thought about it a whole lot, to be honest with you. Why um, not? I knew. I don't know. I um. I don't know, man. I love golf and I love my job. Um, I don't know. You just got but, here. Yeah. So this is the first, yeah, time, first time you're coming back That's right. onto the grounds. Yeah. yeah. And it's one of those places, again, that, that evokes these images and these yes. emotions that most places just don't, yeah. especially for a guy like you who now comes back with a one on yeah. your chest. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, I knew this was going to be emotional. You know, I try, you try preparing yourself for it, but, um, yeah. It's just and John, John is not an emotional guy. He is um, not. No. But 
Yeah. Well, at least in yeah. terms of yeah. in, this type of yeah. emotion. He's a fiery guy, yeah. not an emotional guy. But when I was chatting with him about a month ago uh, about this win, I mean, he even got told me that he was moved yeah. to real emotion. How often do you see him the way you saw him that evening? I, what, the evening of... Uh, when you won it. When he won it. Um, gosh, he was... It was, it was so hectic, honestly, that uh, I don't think it, again, it didn't really set in because it's, it's everything's going on. Um, you know, you get kind of shuttled around to different things. And so I don't think the emotion really sets in. The week after when we got down to Hilton Head, there's a couple times where, you know, he was like, whew, you know, like, can't believe it. So um, it's a special place. And I'm looking forward to this week and, um, you know, hopefully repeating, but if not, just really enjoying you know, all the things that come back with defending. What's the challenge of being where your feet are and realizing the blessing that yeah. you get to work in this arena? Yeah, it's incredible. It's special, you know, there's, um, you, you think back, um, what led you to these points, you know, in life and decisions you make. And, um, you know, I think Caddian's the, I would argue it's the greatest job in the world, um, especially if you love golf, which I do. Um, gives me a ton of time to be home with my family. Um, and just, you know, to be around in, like you said, an arena of these greatest golfers week in and week out, um, seeing history made right there in front of your eyes, it's, it's hard to describe it. So we're here in the Golf Services building at Augusta National Golf Club, and everybody's getting their, getting their food, yeah. getting ready to go out and play around. Yeah. What goes on in here? Like, I don't know what the, What is this? What is I, this place yeah. about? So I'm sure there's some things I can't really say. Maybe I shouldn't say. I don't know. I don't want to get him in trouble, but it's always a good time. It's it's the highlight of the year um, coming here. Uh, the staff is incredible. They take care of us. The food's unreal. You can get uh, order what you want. You have lockers back here. Um, they may or may not have some cold beers after uh, waiting it. for us. So um, they even they give kinda, cold beers to the media. Yeah, they take kinda, care of everybody. Yeah, you just hang out and you know the golf's always on. They'll have two or three different feeds on the TV and. It's just a, a place I look forward to coming every year and just hanging with the guys. Well, best of luck this year. Thank you. I love you. Thanks. And I'm so proud of you, man, because you're Thanks. just such a good person. Um, if there is one lasting memory mm -hmm. from winning the Masters, what is it? I think just, um, you know, it's almost one of those things that nobody can ever take it away from you, right? You can. You know, look back 20, 30, 40 years, and, and you'll always remember these things that happened. And uh, yeah, it's just being at a place like this and, and knowing that you did it, um, I think that's probably the most lasting thing that I take away from it. A lot of weight carrying that one around, Bubba. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. So Have fun this thank week. Thank you. I Thanks. appreciate you all. Thank always. you, Marty. Thank you. Several marquee names in this year's 89-player field addressed the media Tuesday. Five-time Masters champion Tiger Woods told me he believes he can win number six, which of course would tie him atop the all-time list with Jack Nicklaus. Woods admits the endurance required of his body this week is very challenging. He told me, quote, the leg isn't what it used to be, Marty, but that's my life now. He also told me with that trademark Tiger grin, that his legendary competitive drive has not waned. The fire still burns, every bit as hot as ever. I love golf. <laughs> I do. I've, I've, I've always loved it. Um, I, I played other sports growing up, but I just have always loved this sport. What do you believe that you can do this week? If everything comes together, I think I can get one more. Can we describe that any more than that, or we're good? <laughs> Rory McIlroy enters this 88th Masters, still seeking his first victory here at Augusta National. It is the lone major championship that eludes him. I sat down with him last month to discuss his career-long chase for the green jacket and decade-long quest for the career Grand Slam. He told me, quote, I think the window of opportunity is obviously not as wide as it was a decade ago, but I still think there's an opportunity there. I'm an eternal optimist. You have to be in this game or in any sport you play professionally. And I still go to Augusta and to the Masters Tournament every year with that optimism that this could be my year. 
McElroy recalled to the media the gratitude the competitors feel every time they drive down Magnolia Lane. You know, if I cast my mind back to 18-year-old Rory and I'm, you know, driving down Magnolia Lane for the first time, how would I feel? And I think it's just always trying to go back to, you know, being grateful and, and feeling incredibly lucky that you can be a part of this tournament and you get to compete in it every year. And I've got all the tools to to do well this week. It's But again, it's, you know, to to bring those tools out, I think the, one of the most important things is to enjoy it and, and smell the, I guess not the roses, the azaleas along the way. It is my pleasure to welcome Amanda Balionis, who is certainly one of the voices of the Masters, the lead reporter for CBS Sports in their golf space and someone who is entrenched in everything that is this golf tournament. Thank you for your time. Thank you for you having me. You are such me. a sweet person and a great friend, and I appreciate you taking the time. How do you even begin to encapsulate when you get here what you feel? I can't. Even when you were just saying that, I was thinking in my head, I can't believe that I'm even considered a part of the Masters, right? Like, how did how did this happen? It always feels surreal. Every time you get to walk on these grounds and you realize that you get to be a part of it, um, it never gets old and your expectations for yourself to uphold the incredible traditions that make the masters what it is and make Augusta national what it is. It just feels like such a responsibility to maintain what makes everything about this so special. Um, so yeah, it's, it's actually hard to put into words. You, you feel so much gratitude. I'm consistently in awe and I am consistently scared that, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> I just hope that I don't. <laughs> you're not going to mess it up. Uh, you're a consummate professional, a pro's pro. You've uh, personally lived some amazing moments here. I, I've worn her out, you guys, with how impressed I was in 2020 when Dustin Johnson won his green jacket and Amanda had the patience, that's the word, the patience to let the moment breathe and let Dustin have that moment of emotion that we never see from that guy. And it was just a brilliant job by you. But I wonder if you have a personal favorite moment here. Mm, I have so one personal and one I, I would say Dustin Johnson is is probably my most memorable. Um, I guess a couple. I would say the most memorable one simply because Sean McManus is retiring this year, and and he and I, he's been so wonderful to me. Right, my life as it is, does not exist without him believing in me and, and giving me the chance that he did. So I'm forever grateful to him. And we were just sitting at dinner actually at Pebble Beach earlier this year. And he said, do you remember that phone call when I got to call you and tell you that you were going to be a part of our master's team? <laughs> and what did he say? Uh, he called me and I was at home with my parents. I think it was around Thanksgiving, actually. And that's the only reason why I would have been home around the holidays and he said, Amanda, this is Sean McManus. And obviously I was new at CBS. I was like, well, there it goes. How to, <laughs> I guess <laughs> it I was made a nice it. Ride. Yeah, it didn't last as long as I thought it would, <laughs> but great. And I was like, hello, Mr. McManus. What did I do? And he was like, no, this is a good phone call. He said, I just want to let you know um, that we are so happy to welcome you onto our golf on CBS team during the week of the Masters. And uh, I hung up the phone. I immediately started crying, <laughs> told my mom and my dad. They started crying. Um, my dad passed away not not long after that. Um, and that was just one of those, there was no prouder moment in my life than being able to share that with them. I'm just going to make me emotional now. Um, but yeah, I think when I come back here, I think about how you get, nothing really means as much, I think, if you're a sports fan than being in this week and getting to share that with, with him. And that moment was really great. <laughs> I, I was it. not expecting to cry. We were just talking about Dustin Johnson crying, not me crying. <laughs> I love that you shared that um, with us. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it just is really, I think, poignant this year, especially because Sean is retiring after 27 incredible years. Um, but I think that it kind of gets lost in, in the way that he's been able to change a lot of lives. So, um, yeah, that's a great moment. And then work-wise, I think obviously having the chance to cover Tiger Woods 2019, he does what he does that night before asking him, what time are you going to have to get up in the morning to get ready? And I think he answered something ridiculous, like three, three in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> I think he told us 3.30 
And then it continued to get earlier as more people asked him <laughs> <laughs> in the press conferences. Um, so, yeah, that was just an incredible moment to say, holy cow, I cannot believe I have a front row seat to this. Uh, and then Dustin Johnson, man, I, that is what I think about when I see a football with the Augusta National logo on it, because obviously that was the first time college game day is happening there. We're in the middle of football season. You have a Masters happening. It was one of the most surreal moments. We're in the middle of a pandemic. You're like, what is happening here, right? No patrons. And uh, yeah, that was such a unique situation because we've never done an interview after the Butler Cabin interview with Jim Nance. And when they said we're going to put you out there with whoever the champion is, I kind of thought like, what am I going to ask him that Jim Nance has not asked him, right? No one wants to follow up Jim Nance, no, you right? Don't. And I, to this day, do not want to follow up Jim Nance. Um, but I think w the magic there was the fact that he had that time to, to let it soak in, right? Uh, you think from the time the Masters champion is it, crowned, so then he gets ushered very quickly into Butler Cabin. And it's the whole thing's a big whirlwind. And I think that moment was the first time he had some quiet in his head. And we were all quiet because we were in a commercial break. Lance Barrow's telling me to lay out. We're not chatting like maybe I usually would with him. And all these photographers are, are you know, a couple yards away from us. We have his wife and brother, you know, standing to the right of us. And it was just silence. And you could kind of see him taking it all in. And when I asked that question about, you know, growing up, every putt he practiced was to win the Masters. And what would he tell the younger him? I, I think that might have actually been what he was thinking about in that moment was, I can't believe I just did this. I just accomplished that childhood dream for the little boy inside. And I just think that was one of the more powerful moments um, probably of my career. Unless you've been in the position that you're in, which I have to a certain degree at ESPN as well, when there's a really historic moment that's been achieved, you think it's easy to ask the right question. Yeah. And it's not. It's an important moment in our world, but it's also a forever moment in the annals of time. Mm. What's your process to... Yeah, I, you know... two questions seems like nothing, but and, they're the definitive two <laughs> questions of record. For whatever that achievement was. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I think often there are certainly wrong questions to ask. No doubt. But there are a million right questions to ask. And that's really hard when you only have a few moments in your brain to figure out which one you go for. Um, yeah, it's, it's not easy, right? And there's, you know it as well as I do, it's the most subjective thing in the world, right? I There have been times where I still, to this day, tell you, I ask the exact right question there have been plenty of articles saying that was I get an I get an F grade and that was the worst question they've ever heard. Right. Well, so they've like, never been in that they've never been in those shoes. It's, anybody who's you're says never gonna that. make everyone happy, but I do think my goal is, especially in those winners' interviews and in those life changing interviews, what can I ask that is going to let us into that small window of everything this means to them? Right. Like I wanna make that player proud in that moment. It's not about me or, or the hard question or, or even necessarily journalistically what the right thing is. Like I, that player earned that moment and I want them to shine as brightly as they deserve to shine. Um, and that's really the place I come from every time in the winner's interview. What can I ask you that is going to allow people to see the you that worked tirelessly to make this possible? Um, so that's what I try to go with. And doesn't always work, but you hope it works more often than it doesn't. Well, I love that perspective because I believe the human spirit wins, especially in those moments. And you do such a great job at it. One of the individuals that had a wonderful achievement this week was Lottie Wode. You and I both Man. had the opportunity to chat with her. Um, I am, as you sit here, I think uh, I've interviewed six or seven people already this week, and I've had three criers, so I am on the Tom <laughs> Rinaldi plan here. But she was right here. No, so did you make Lottie cry? No, I did oh, not. me either. Oh, I, I would have retired. Yeah. I mean, if I, as, as, having had this time with her, I would have been like, okay, I'm winning here. But what a tremendous – to birdie 15, 17, 18, and come home – you know, chasing Bailey Shoemaker the way she was and who's in the clubhouse with a 66 and the whole thing. What do you, how do you define her achievement? Man, I, I think when I wrote the script, 
when I looked at the way that she was able to perform down the stretch with the composure that she had, I think the one of the last lines I wrote down for the recap was, this is not the finish line. This is just the beginning. And that's really how it felt for me with her. You watch the confidence that she poured in that putt on 18 that was not a short, insignificant yeah. putt. And it went down with the confidence of a veteran who has been on a stage like this before. And now, granted, has she won at Carnoustie? Yes. Has she won at Baltusrol? Yes. But someone to be on this stage in that moment knowing that, hey, if I miss it, there's a playoff, right? Most people are not able to do what she did. And if I miss twice, I lose. That's right. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's like, why we're not in here. She's you think pick. about three of the final four yeah. holes. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's really remarkable. It was her composure just was astounding to me. And I don't know if she told you this too, but in our interview, I asked her about what she prepared with her caddy. And she said, we prepared for me to be taken over on the leaderboard. And that helped me so much. And just, again, that veteran mentality of talking to your caddy saying, we know at some point we're going to lose the lead and how are we going to handle that? And then be able to stick to that when it actually happens. Certainly mature beyond your Ooh, years. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of Lottie Wode moving forward uh, whenever she chooses to turn professional. Well, I agree. And I can't wait to see what we see as this week progresses. There are storylines galore. Scotty Scheffler, the far and away favorite yeah. at this point. Uh, to continue his masterful run through 2024. Tiger Woods is back. Rory again for the 10th straight year, chasing the career slam in his first green jacket. If you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you expect? What are we looking at? I say it every year. I will go Rory McIlroy every year until he completes the career grand slam. I've, I know he's going to do it. I firmly believe he's going to do it. I think it's just a matter of when. Um, obviously he's coming in an unbelievable form solo third last week goes and works with Butch. I think he's changing up his schedule a little bit this week, um, you know, to make himself as comfortable as possible. Then you have a Brooks Kepka. It's really hard to count out Brooks, right? He's the best major cha championship player in the world. Uh, it, I mean, T2 here last year and nobody plays better with a chip on their shoulder than Brooks Kepka. What was interesting about him last year, and I would love your perspective on this because I'm sure you chatted with him in the moment. Yeah. He believes that he lost that golf tournament rather than John Rahm winning that golf tournament because he consciously changed his approach and took his foot off the proverbial, proverbial pedal. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of? That's what he will tell you. He right. feels like he did not play the aggressive game that has gotten him where he is. And to be fair, I mean, when you look at the way Tiger Woods won, right, his fifth green jacket, a lot of that was because he played smart and stayed disciplined. So generally speaking, that is a pretty smart strategy around here when you're in contention. Don't mess up. Other people will. And that's the way you win the Masters. Um, Brooks felt like, yeah, he kind of gave it away, I think, in the, in the way that he said. He said, I won't make that mistake again. He goes on to win the PGA Championship. Um, but I don't think he will ever be happy until he's slipping on a green jacket. I think he firmly believes he... He deserves to be in that champion's dinner for as long as he wants to be. Um, and he's healthy again. I think we cannot underscore that enough. Um, an unhealthy Brooks Kepka was still scary. A healthy Brooks Kepka is really dangerous. Really he really dangerous. is. He's just such an – I mean, I, I, I consider him an assassin yeah. between the lines. He's one of those guys that really does go out there to take what he wants. And I think he did learn in 2023 because – when you play not to lose, then you're timid. Yeah. And you, you don't have that same level of tenacity. And that's been his brand. Yeah. That's who he is. So it'll be fun to see him attack maybe, Augusta National this it's week. It's interesting. Maybe there is a difference. Maybe that's a question I'm going to try to ask him. What's the difference between playing timid and playing smart when you're in contention at a golf course like this? Well, I think based on last year's context, it's a great question. Yeah. Uh, for him specifically. Because having a production meeting right yeah, now. Yeah, you're great. welcome. You guys uh, <laughs> expect that question on CBS later this <laughs> week. Producer but, credit over here. <laughs> but uh, what, what about John Rahm? Uh, he comes in um, as the defending champion, obviously knows his way around this place. Yeah. What do you expect from him? Um, I will not take credit for, for what I'm about to say because I was just with Trevor Immelman earlier, and this is totally his thing. 
Uh, but he calculated how much John Rahm played last year leading into the Masters. And obviously, undisputed world number one came in with those three wins. This marked his fourth. Um, he was just absolutely on fire. From the time that he has now left and gone to live, he has not played nearly as many rounds, you know, for a number of reasons. And I think it's just going to be interesting to see how much does John Rahm need to play in order to play his best golf, right? I think that's always a question mark now that we're in this unchartered territory, right, of, a, of another tour and, um, you know, there being 54 holes and, and no cut. How, how does that change things? Does that change things for someone who is a future Hall of Famer like John Rahm? Um, my tendency is to think no, but these guys are also creatures of habit, right? They, they like to do things a certain way and – when maybe that is no longer an option, does that have an impact? Um, will I ever count John Rahm out? No, I think we all know better I than mean, that. He just but so good here. Yeah, it's just I interesting mean. to see the the lead in. Does that have any impact or not? But he is so good here. He's so comfortable here. He's so confident here. Um, and another baby on the way, which I always genuinely <laughs> feel like that makes guys play better for whatever reason. You gotta so, pay for uh, another one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> if you you know you discuss the lead up, nobody's had a better one than Scotty Scheffler. That's right. What what do you think he can go for a second? Without a doubt. The thing that blows me away about Scotty Scheffler is his entire being. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's he's his spirituality Unreal is such a beautiful thing to witness because He's one of those guys that truly believes it's written, so yeah. he can go out and play with complete Such fearlessness. Freedom. Such freedom, right. right? And like, and this idea that golf is not his whole purpose, right? He plays. It will never. I think he always says this. Golf doesn't define me, and you can hear athletes say that in any sport, right? Football doesn't define me. Okay. When when it's said and done, though, it kind of does, right? Not for Scotty Scheffler. Like, golf genuinely does not define him. So when things don't go his way, he doesn't react the way a normal world number one reacts. He reacts the way that someone does when it isn't life or death feeling. And it's it's amazing to watch and, and to watch that consistency of just Scotty never changing, no matter how well things are going or how poorly things are going. And I think that is the thing that keeps him on top for I, – I don't understand how it will ever be a different outcome, honestly. If he doesn't change his swing, he doesn't get lost in the sauce ever, right? He doesn't go down a rabbit hole when things start to go poorly, even with his putting. It's just everything he does is just so consistent and so steady, and he trusts himself. And, you know, I think for him this greater purpose so much more that it has just created one of the most consistent players we've ever seen. Yeah, he's such a great example. Uh, not only as a player with that mental fortitude, but yeah. as a person with his approach and his faith and his marriage, and he's just a he's a total and another one total baby stud. on the way, right? It's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, what do we say? They always Real play for better. him. And yeah. uh, all right, so I'll get you. I'll, I'll let you run after this. I don't know where you live in the picking winners world. Okay, I hate doing it. Yeah. I mean, hate. I thought you guys said love is like San Diego, best place on the planet. <laughs> Next question, easy. <laughs> um. If I asked you to pick who you got. I mean, I guess I just said it. I'm going to continue to pick Rory yep, until good. it happens. But if I do it, you have to pick. You can't leave me out on I, an island. I can tell you that Rory does not want me to pick him because okay. I did it last year and he went home on Friday. Okay, so don't do that. So I think it's best if I don't pick <laughs> him. Um, I think that we would all be crazy to to not really think Scotty. Yeah, that, I agree. I agree. That, uh, I was going to say his odds, but I'm not sure if we're allowed to do that on here or not. But uh, he's an overwhelming favorite. And with all that momentum and the perspective we just mentioned, um, I'm not going to say my pick. But You just said your pick, Scott. I mean, I, I, I might have given an inclination, but I didn't pick anything. Because I guess I my inclination is someone might complete <laughs> the career grand slam, oh, possibly. But, it. you know, you t you and I really going after some dark horses over here. You we're know, really yeah, going we out on a limb. We're, we're way out there on a limb. Um <laughs> So I have this thing with Rory that if he that when he win he finally he's gonna win it yeah when I he agree. finally wins the Masters I'm gonna go home to Ireland with him love that yeah man I okay don't, I don't know if he remembers that but I do <laughs> I love you Rory um, thank you thank you're you you're wonderful Sorry. always appreciate your perspective and Sorry your time for crying. 
And um, I'm so glad I made you cry. You did. It's the first. Somebody get her some tissues. <laughs> <laughs> so the win. She did it. She did it. Back to back birdies. 33 of the last four. And Lonnie Wood has won the 2024 Augusta National Women's Amateur in grand style. Florida State All-American sophomore Lottie Wode on Saturday won the Augusta National Women's Amateur. She birdied 15, 17, and 18 en route to a one-stroke victory over University of Southern California freshman Bailey Shoemaker. I walked with Wode out to the location of one of those thrilling final round birdies, the 17th green, to discuss her historic moment. Lottie Wode is the 2024 Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. Congratulations, first Thank you. of all. All right. Florida State sophomore, All-American. We are standing on the 17th green where on Saturday, you walk up here knowing you need a birdie. Yep. And then you know you need another one <laughs> right down the way. You didn't even seem remotely rattled about, how did you maintain your composure and where's that come from? Well, I didn't really have anything to lose. Um, one back with two to play. Um, it was kind of just make the birdies or or I wouldn't have won. So uh, I had a short wedge into 17, um, gave myself a good look and made a great putt down the hill. Uh, then 18, I knew if I could just get a good tee shot, uh, cause that tee shot is not very easy. Uh, I would have a short iron into that pin, which is right at the front, which has the back tier behind it. So I kind of use it to bring it back. You've now had an evening to digest what you just accomplished. What stands out most? Um, yeah, I'm still kind of getting my head wrapped around it, but just being able to come back from, I was too, I was ahead at one point. I don't know how far ahead I got, but I started at two ahead and eventually found myself two behind and that could have rattled me, but um, I managed to hang in there. And um, those, two, those, those that last part, I'm just gonna be rewatching for it for quite a while. <laughs> I think a lot of us will. It was, it was historic. And, you know, so you talk about uh, you have a lead and then you got to sleep on that lead. Yeah. How'd you sleep? Well, you had to sleep like an extra night on it too because we had the practice day in between. Um, didn't sleep great, honestly. Woke up a little early, but um, I was just generally more excited than I was nervous to, to come out here and play at Augusta leading. It's, it's something not many people can say. When you try to encapsulate what this experience was like for somebody who's maybe never lived what you've lived. What do you say? Um, just unbelievable experience. It doesn't compare to anything else really. Um, like for a women's amateur event, being able to play at Augusta and do it in front of all the people that watched um, here and on, on TV is just something that I wouldn't have thought a few years ago. All the people who've watched, it's around the world. Yeah. What's been the reaction from your friends, from your family, people you don't know? Yeah, I, my, my phone's been blowing up. Um, I've been gaining lots of followers and any, anyone I've really ever spoken to or met has reached out. So um, just trying to reply to people eventually. You got a whole bunch of new friends, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> what have your teammates said? Um, some of them were here yesterday yeah. watching me with my coach. Uh, so that was really nice that they could see it. Uh, the rest were back in Tallahassee and they all on the group chat were texting me just like saying how proud they were of me and um, congratulating me and it was really nice. So I read that your grandfather got you your first set of clubs when you yeah. were three years old. Yeah. Now you're at Florida State University having a tremendous career. How far has that little girl who received those clubs come? Pretty, pretty long way um, from getting clubs when I was like, what, three or four and some plastic sets here and there and then getting to play here. Um, probably wouldn't have thought of that a few years ago. Speaking of your grandparents, your grandmother was here to see you live this dream. What's it mean to you that she was able to be here and, and be immersed in it the way she was? Yeah, it means a lot. My whole family came over and she talked about it last year, how she was gonna come and I was like, Okay, I didn't really believe her, but then, then she came and um, she didn't walk all 18 of, at Champions Retreat. That course is so hilly, so she struggled a little bit. Um, but she walked the whole 18 yesterday and um, got to see me make those parts at the end. And um, I'm sure it was a great experience for her. 
when you consider birdieing 15, 17, and 18 on your way to victory, I mean, Bailey Shoemaker's in the clubhouse with a 66. Yes. After a phenomenal performance. When that last ball drops, what, what, what's going through your mind? Um, a little bit of disbelief. Uh, at that point, I was when I was probably after I'd bogeyed 13 and then hit the tree on 14, I was thinking, okay, this is, this is a long way back from, from here. Uh, but making that huge pass save on that hole gave me a bit of momentum. Um, and I knew the last few holes were very gettable. I just had to step up and make those putts. What pride do you have that you're going to be able to bring this home to England? Um, a lot of pride. Uh, not, not many English people have won at Augusta, so to be among those select few is, is really cool. I actually just met uh, Danny Willett in the clubhouse, who's one of those English people that won here, um, so that was really cool. What did he say? Uh, he said congrats and uh, we, yeah, uh, good player. He knows um, my caddies are my England women's coach. He worked with him when he was younger. Um, so um, he knew him and it was kind of pretty cool. What? Okay, so I, I read that too, that your caddy is your, your coach in England. That's somebody who's known you since little? Um, so he's my England like national coach. So I've okay. known him for a few years. My home coach, like my swing coach has known, has taught me since I was seven and he was here this week as well. What do they say? Because <laughs> they've seen the, tr the, 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 the trend and the progression in your game and you as a young woman. Yeah, they were very happy for me and uh, he worked with me since I started golf and been through a lot of ups and downs, I would say. And um, he was just, it was really great. He could be here to watch this moment. All right, so your Florida State teammates tell me that you're a bit of a messy eater. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, I'm wondering if you've tried a pimento cheese yet or an egg salad sandwich yet, and if so, how did that go? I haven't tried one. I feel we, like we have to do better. I feel like right. if, if I do, it's just going to go down. So We got to do a better job. So right now, uh, we're going to wrap up the interview, and we're going to go and get you a pimento <laughs> cheese because it is Georgia. Okay. That sandwich is Georgia <laughs> on bread. All right? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful achievement. Amazing job, Lottie Wode, Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. This is Four Please Now Driving. I'm your host, Marty Smith. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the New Look Official Masters podcast. I'm so grateful to spend this time with you at this amazing place. We'll be back each evening with unique interviews and analysis from the epicenter at Augusta National Golf Club. Be well, my friends.